so I've got the Dwarf 2 on my polar alignment mount. Hi, thanks very much for joining me today here on Astro Dwarf Adventures. Today I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Um, first off, thank you very much to Claire at Dwarf Labs. She was very, very kind to send me a little goodie bag. I have, of course, if you've seen many of my uh, videos, you know I, I, I do wear a, a cap often when I'm out. So thank you very much for that. I love the cap. I wonder if she saw my videos and that's why they sent that, because that, that would be good if that's why. Also very kindly sent me, uh, which I didn't have, uh, the UHC uh, filter, light pollution filter. I'm going to use that in this video to image uh, Andromeda Galaxy. Um, and I'm using this filter because my back garden's a Bortle 6, 7 sky. So there's quite a bit of light pollution. And obviously we're going to see if that really makes a difference. So thank you very much for that. It's really, really appreciated. And it will be used probably every time I'm using the Dwarf 2 telescope. And as I said, you'll see that in this video. The other thing they were kind enough to send me was uh, a couple of the... Um, Solar filters, of course you do need two, because uh, you need one to cover the wide angle and the telephoto lens when you point it at the sun, or you will do damage to your telescope. You're not going to beat the original product. These are exceptionally well made, absolutely worth every penny. And I will be doing a video using these uh, and doing a bit of solar imaging, because um, hopefully now we're getting better weather, I'll be able to do that. So thanks very much uh, Dwarf Lab, and thanks very much Claire for doing that. And do look forward to our upcoming video. Today we're going to be using a polar alignment mount that I made. As you know, I love to tinker. Um, so I made a, a polar alignment mount so you can add that to any tripod. Just goes through the hot shoe screw and lines up with your Dwarf uh, 2 telescope and gets your Dwarf 2 into equatorial mode. Of course, the advantage of being in equatorial mode when you're pointing at the North Star, you're pointing at celestial north, the base of your tripod is pointing at the celestial north. Of course, what that means is your telescope only has to spin on the one axis. So, of course, at the moment, what you have is your telescope. It slews on this axis and it slews on this axis. And then, that obviously, it can follow an object all night long. What that does, however, is cause a problem we would call that field rotation, where when you're stacking images, you just see that every image is slightly rotated from the next. It means you have to crop it in a lot smaller to get rid of those rotation artifacts. When we have this set up, in equatorial mode and it's pointing, let's say that's now pointing at celestial north. Now all the telescope has to do is rotate around this one axis and it can basically follow the object and follow the rotation of the sky as well as seen by the telescope so that you don't get that field rotation artifacts going on in your images. What instead you have is the a much more squarer image. The stacks are a lot more parallel with each other as they stack up, so you don't have to crop it in as tight, so having larger fields of view. Of course, that's important where you have a very large deep sky object and or perhaps you're trying to get a very big star vista. Certain Messier targets will give you three, four galaxies in the one image. Uh, we know the focal length of the telescope allows us to do that, but the problem is because of the rotational artifacts caused when stacking, you're having to crop it in tight and losing some of that data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I set up this polar mount, and what it does and how we use it as well. Let's go on and show you. Okay, so I've got the Dwarf 2 on my polar alignment mount. You can see I have got it level. Spirit levels in the middle. So just, just using the tripod. So you can adjust the angle. So I made sure my uh, tripod is completely level. And as you can see, what I've done also is I've got it pointing to north. The idea behind this is, first things first, you get the tripod level and you get it facing uh, north. And now basically what I could do is every time I came out, I would just say, just say it was here on the number two slot. And theoretically, I'm going to be within a few arc seconds of celestial north without having to go through all the setup again. Obviously, I'm going to find Polaris just now, actually get it um, looking through this eyepiece, which we can see here. So we're going to look through that eyepiece, obviously from the bottom. So we'll be looking through here, through the eyepiece, and 
find Polaris. Uh, so let me do that now and we'll see how that goes. Right, so I can raise it up so I can look underneath. I'm gonna be looking through this eyepiece like so. Uh, and once I locate Polaris, I would then be able to come to the side here, see what that's pointing at, and then coming out the following day, all I gotta do is level the tripod, point it at magnetic north, rotate it to whatever slot, let's say on two at the moment, and I know within a few arc seconds, I am gonna be pointing at Polaris. Polaris should be pretty close to the center of my eyepiece. If not, slight rotation, put Polaris in my eyepiece, and I know now, it's acting as an equatorial mount, um, polar aligned. So I would be following the object all night and it's only this axis that has to move. This axis will move round. That means I shouldn't have the image artifact with the rotation uh, of each image as you know, 15 second exposure, the sky rotates. And then because you get the rotation of the stacked image, you obviously have to crop it in a lot tighter. But if I can just track the image all night long and keep it square to the camera lens, what that's going to mean is that each stacked image should lie nicer within my image and not having to crop off as much because it all just rotate around the one axis now. Right, so that's basically the theory behind it. I will locate Polaris now. So I've located Polaris. Right, I feel I should interject here. Uh, I just said, now I'm finding Polaris. Honestly, it was really difficult for me because of my light pollution. I could see Cassiopeia, I could see Ursa um, Major, I couldn't even see Ursa Minor, if I'm being honest. Um, there was just too much light pollution and um, I found it really, really difficult. It took me literally, I would say, best part of 20, 30 minutes to actually get onto Polaris uh, and that's why I think I'm really happy with my mount because once I had it on Polaris when I looked at the side and I could see the the, the angle uh, that it was lying at it was basically just past notch one not quite a notch two it's like one and a quarter so the good thing about this is now that even though it's not exact it really doesn't matter I can go out the next time I can instantly level my tripod I can uh, turn it one degree northwest of uh, magnetic north and I can instantly just angle my tripod and I can rotate this to one and a quarter uh, and that quick um, I've now got this facing to celestial north um, and I've got it you know probably within a, a few degrees of pointing at Polaris um, I now look through this finder scope here um, so I can basically look through here now and I should see Polaris within the field of view. Now again, I may need to adjust slightly left, slightly right, slightly up, slightly down, but it should be really, really close to, you know, Polaris is a fairly bright star, so I really should be looking through here now and seeing Polaris quite, quite evidently. The, the problem I had, as I said, I kind of, I kind of sort of glossed over it, but it actually took me about 20 minutes because it was such, you know, it was such light pollution that I really couldn't see. So the advantage of this is, does it have to be exactly on uh, Polaris, Celestial North? Well, the answer is no, it doesn't. Um, all I'm going to be doing now is, you know, I can come out, quickly rotate it around to um, one degree northwest of north, uh, angle it at one and a quarter on the notch, and I know I'm going to be really close. Uh, it was actually a real issue to find Polaris because of the light pollution. I couldn't see Ursa Minor. I just couldn't see it. I could see Ursa Major, I could see Cassiopeia, and I used that, and you've seen the image, and I'll, I'll put this image in here so you can see it. Um, and I used that to get on what I believe is planned. I couldn't actually see Ursa Minor, therefore I couldn't actually see if it was the last star on the tail of Ursa Minor because I couldn't actually see Ursa Minor. The light pollution uh, was quite bad. I had a backlight on, uh, the garden next to me got incredibly ridiculously bright security light in the back garden uh, and that came on every time I scratched my nose. Um, so you know it made it really difficult and it, it was screwing up my night vision and everything else. I have the um, mount, the, the actual tripod is now pointing right at it. So if we have a look, you see I'm basically just on the edge of one, between one and two, just on the edge of one, and that's the angle. 
Right, well, that worked beautifully. And you're not gonna be able to see this, of course, but if you could look through there, you would see Polaris. Okay, so we can see here I have the magnetic filter holder and I have the um, UHC uh, light pollution filter. And I'm gonna image Andromeda polar aligned with the filter on, because I'm in bottle six to seven skies. So that should help with light pollution. So, okay, with that being said, let's start imaging. So there you are, you've seen uh, how I've used this polar mount set up into uh, equatorial mode, polar aligned, and you can see the result of the image. Also, I'd, I'd like to add here as well, it's a great looking image in the respect to using the filter. I feel that that has helped massively. It's giving me a much darker background and a much brighter uh, image, the deep sky object itself, the target seems brighter, the background seems darker even before I've done any post-processing. So here is the post-processed image of Andromeda. I'll really just to reduce some of the noise, I've not, I've done the bare minimum processing with this just to bring out the image a little bit. I think the UHC uh, light pollution filter from Dwarf Lab has done an excellent job at really reducing the light pollution and pulling out that DSO from the background and I think it when you've got any sort of light pollution, it's going to be an invaluable little thing. So if you haven't got it, I'll put the link to that filter in the bottom for the Dwarf Labs accessories page. Please go to Dwarf Labs and get it. It's only a few bucks uh, and it will, if you've got any sort of light pollution at all, it really will uh, improve the quality of your image. I think it's done a great job comparing it to the last shot of Andromeda that I took without using the the filter and now using the light pollution filter, I think the difference is absolutely visible. Okay, now if you were in a really dark bottle, two, three skies, you may not need it. Uh, any backyard astrophotography, I think it's going to be invaluable. Your street lights, your security lights from other gardens coming on, they're all going to affect your image. And this filter, I think, has really brought out the DSO, darkened the sky and got rid of a vast amount of that light pollution and give me a much, much better image as a result. So what I'm gonna be doing is actually a giveaway of one of these polar mounts. If you want to be eligible for the draw, if you make sure you're subscribed to my channel, like this video and comment below what questions you'd like me to ask Dwarf Lab when I get the chance to speak to them uh, in a week or two, uh, what sort of things would you like to know about this telescope? either just basic information if you're new to it or whether you're wanting something a bit more specific about the software. So any changes you like to the software, any additions you like to the software, anything you could think, leave a comment below. Make sure you like this video and you're subscribed. And on my next video, I'll do a random draw using one of these random draw generators and I will be giving away one of these and maybe a few other little things as well. As you know, I love to tinker. So I've got my batting off masks, the lens adapter using telephoto lens with this dwarf uh, two telescope. Please, if you want to be included in that, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the video and please make sure you leave a comment. Tell me what you'd like me to ask um, Dwarf Lab and Claire when I get a chance to speak to her in a few weeks from now and that'll help me obviously uh, guide how that's going to go so I'm giving you the content that you actually want to hear and ask the questions you would like answered so I hope you've enjoyed this video thanks again Dwarf Lab for the filters and for the cap I will be wearing this as you know I wear a cap near enough every time I'm out um, so it was a lovely surprise and it was really really appreciated uh, so Claire thanks very much uh, to you for that you and I have been talking and we're going to try and arrange a little um, interview and we're going to talk about the uh, upcoming software release so again guys thanks very much for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it I've tried to make it as entertaining as
and as informative as possible. So take care guys, thanks very much for watching this video. It's always very, very much appreciated. If you haven't already, please subscribe if you're just new to my channel. Uh, if you like this video, please like um, and leave your comments below. That would be fantastic. And don't forget to look up because you just don't know what you're gonna see. Take care, cheers guys.